Hello space engineers, welcome to this three minute tutorial on atmospheres. So breathing, we sometimes take it for granted and to explain it today, I think it'd be best to gain some altitude. Here on the earth like planet, we'll start in the foothills of the mountains. So we already have a little bit of altitude above sea level and that's what we're interested in. Not so much the altitude above ground that's on the HUD. On our HUD down the bottom on the right, we have our oxygen level and our warmth level. And you can see we've already just gained a little bit of altitude and our oxygen is dropping into a moderate range. I can still keep my helmet open and I'm able to breathe but that will change as we get higher. The other thing that's been impacted on as we gain altitude is the effectiveness of our atmospheric thrusters. So you can see the kilonewtons are steadily dropping as we get higher to a point where the thrusters won't be able to keep up even on full thrust. There simply won't be enough air to grab onto. And now we've reached an altitude where breathing is just a bit too difficult so I'm starting to get injured I'll shut my helmet and start to use my limited per Personal supply which I can top up by either going back into an atmospheric environment or if I've got a full oxygen bottle in my inventory. Now our atmospheric thrusters have reached their limit we're no longer ascending in fact we are now starting to fall. Time to turn on the hydrogen thruster I think and start gaining altitude again. The hydrogen thrusters work equally well in atmospheres and vacuums whereas we're just coming up on 8,000 meters of altitude above sea level and the atmospheric thrusters are now completely useless. As we continue upward the 10 kilometer mark is approximately the barrier between atmosphere and space where we'll see the outside temperature go freezing and we'll lose oxygen completely. Now we're heading back down to the planet's surface and you can see the same issue that affected our atmospheric thrusters is affecting our parachute that it's just not able to grab any air to be effective. So as we get near the 7000 meter mark I'll try opening up my helmet see if there's enough oxygen. Not quite enough yet but you can see that atmospheric layer behind me and we'll start to see a little bit of impact on the parachute performance and we're also starting to get back into that warm environment and now I'm no longer getting injured I have enough oxygen to be able to breathe still not enough to refill my onboard O2 container I'll need to be in a full oxygen atmosphere to do that and now at 6,000 meters our parachute is fully deploying moving to the alien planet you can see there is low oxygen here unfortunately opening the helmet I get injured there's not enough oxygen to breathe but some is better than none here on Mars, no oxygen and a freezing environment, however we still do have an atmosphere so our atmospheric thrusters work, whereas here on the moon, uh, not so much. Low but breathable oxygen here on Pertum. The oxygen does get a bit thicker if you get down into the bottom of one of the canyons. On any of the planets where you are, where it is in the day night cycle and the weather will make an impact on the type of conditions that you face. For example here if we initiate a sandstorm then we start to get injured with our helmet open. Another example is you'd get a freezing effect during a snowstorm. Here on the ice planet Triton, plenty of oxygen but still a freezing environment. So when my suit runs out of power, then I get injured. And time is up. Thanks everybody for watching. Feel free to leave a comment and we'll see you next time.